Well, hello everybody, let's get started. My name is Mark Shuttleworth from Canonical. And today I wanna to talk about doing things with Docker images with much less toil. Uh, Docker makes things much simpler, right? Kubernetes makes things much simpler, or at least they're supposed to. Um, what I wanted to talk about today is the cases where in order to get things done, you have to go and do a ton of extra work uh, and some work that we've been doing over a long period of time, now focused on Kubernetes, to really reduce the amount of work that you have to put into integrating and operating lots of complicated applications. Okay, so the name of today's presentation is Less Toil and More Focus. My goal is to help you get all the things that should be easy done easily, so that you can focus on the things that really are going to be, you know, as hard as, as, as they need to be for you to be amazing, right? In other words, for you to focus on the things that are uniquely your problem by building on a community so that there's less toil in everything that should be easy. So um, today I'm going to cover a couple of different things, say half an hour. Um, I'm going to talk about the big problem. Uh, I'm going to tell you the big idea. Uh, I'm going to do a demo. Uh, I'm going to then show you a bit of the architecture behind that. Uh, I'll tell you about the community. I'll point you to the docs. And along the way, there'll be a bunch of bad slides. So Docker's amazing, right? This will be familiar to everybody. We can, we can um, take our code. We can build that. We can turn that into an image. And then we can blast that with incredible precision and fidelity. Uh, into test, into staging, and into production. And we have complete control of every single detail along the way, um, and uh, we can get exactly what we want, exactly where we want it, and we can specify everything down to the, to the finest detail. And that's awesome, that's Docker, that's Kubernetes, that's wonderful. Um, the problem is that in order to run my code, I don't only have to run my application, right? I, I also have to run a ton of other stuff. And my application has to interact with all of that other stuff. Um, and that other stuff is sort of boring. It's, it's infrastructure. It's effectively the same stuff for everybody, right? So how do I do that? Well, I suppose you could go and, and, uh, and get Helm charts for all of that. Um, and there are tens of thousands of Helm charts out there. There's no shortage of Helm charts. You will find Helm charts for everything that you want. And there are other ways to essentially stand up containers from Docker Hub uh, to do all of that other stuff, right? That's not your code. Um, the problem is oil, right? There's a bunch of detail to be got right there. Almost certainly there isn't one magical Helm chart that gives me exactly what I want. So I'm gonna have to go in and, and work with all of the details. Um, so that's toil. And then there's also the problem of provenance, right? Where exactly did those Helm charts come from? And where exactly did the underlying Docker images come from? And what are they really doing? And where were they built, right? Provenance is a problem. So the solution to provenance, obviously, is we just build everything from scratch. We take the source code of all of those things and we compile them all and we turn them into Docker images. Now we know exactly what's in them. We know exactly where they were built and we put them through test and staging and production. But the other way to describe all of this would be toil, toil and more toil, right? This is a lot of work just to run things that really should be easy to run. So that's the big problem. And the big idea to get to less toil and more focus is simple. The big idea is just to encapsulate in community projects all of the toil so that everybody can essentially consume stuff more easily, that's standard, so that they can focus more on the things that really are unique to them. So let me take a really simple version of this problem. There's this awesome free software um, web-based chat uh, solution and community called Mattermost. And Mattermost uh, uses a Postgres DB. So if I just wanted to stand up a community site um, and I just wanted to get Mattermost up running quickly in, in Kubernetes, right? how hard would that be? Well, let me show you a demo of 
um, how that can happen uh, in um, in in this new approach, right? So I'm going to go get me a Kubernetes cluster, and I guess I need to change something here. Um, I am going to use microgates, and I just have a common garden variety microgates running on Ubuntu 20.04. Um, I've enabled DNS and storage. Those are super standard services, one command. Um, and so now I'm going to go and bootstrap the piece that's going to control all of this, right? So I'm going to go say Juju bootstrap microgates. And I could just specify the cluster out of my kubectl configuration, and I would, I would get uh, Juju up and running. Now, Juju is, in Kubernetes speak, an operator lifecycle manager. So it's a way of keeping track of pieces of software that are going to do all the work to drive the applications that I want to run. Um, and what I'm going to do is use prepackaged op operators, prepackaged operations code of Mattermost and Postgres, right? And I'm not just going to stand those up. I'm also going to integrate them so that effectively I get I get everything done without me having to know how it got done, none of the details on my problem, right? So Juju's now running on that Kubernetes. That took about 20 seconds. Now I'm going to say add model, let's go say community, because I'm going to make a space where I can put my community chat. Um, and now I'm going to go and say Juju deploy Mattermost Kates. I'm fetching a charm. That charm is a package of operator code, effectively, that knows how to run Mattermost on Kubernetes. And I'm going to say Juju deploy Postgres Kubernetes, which does the obvious thing. Um, so now what I'm, what I'm running on Kubernetes is those operators, effectively, and they are talking to the operator lifecycle manager, Juju. And if I say, um, get all the pods, then you can see the beginnings of that stuff starting to run, right? So there's very little on that Kubernetes. I didn't need lots of complicated stuff. I just bootstrapped Juju and asked for those two services, Mattermost and Postgres. Postgres is supposed to be hard on Kubernetes, right? Stateful sets and all of that sort of stuff. This isn't hard. Um, and if I ask, Juju for a picture of what's going on, you'll see that effectively these pieces are coming up and they're fetching the underlying Docker images. So now we start to answer the question of provenance because the Docker images are also coming from the community. And effectively, we're getting now community maintenance, not just of the operators, but also of the underlying Docker images, right? I can do this any day of the week and I know I'm running a current up-to-date Postgres that's fully patched. And obviously there's ways to keep patching and, and make sure that you are getting the latest stuff easily up and running. So let me switch back to the deck. So I don't just need to run these two, these two services, right? Um, I've, I've stood up Mattermost and I've stood up Postgres, but I didn't tell them about them. I didn't effectively configure the one to know about the other. I haven't done anything really, right? I've just asked for those two services. One of the one of the really key ideas in this project is the idea that we can actually describe lines of integration. And so telling the Mattermost operator to integrate with the Postgres operator is effectively saying, I'm going to draw the line between those two icons. And just by doing that, I will go and get them to do the work. So let me uh, switch to that. Right. So I'm going to go and say Juju relates Mattermost Kates, which was the first charm operator that I had deployed, to PostgreSQL Kates, which was the second. Uh, and I need to say that I want that to relate 
to the database because PostgreSQL can offer up a couple of different services and I'm looking for the database service from that PostgreSQL operator. And nothing much is gonna change. Effectively, those two start exchanging information through the, oper through the operator lifecycle manager and I've just asked them to integrate. They're gonna go off and do that work. Let me show you, let me show you how that actually is working behind the scenes. Well, let me show you first where those pieces are coming from, right? Those operators, the charmed operators, are coming from charmhub.io. And charmhub.io is the community forum where different people are working on operators, charmed operators that work with the Juju Operator Lifecycle Manager that understands integration as a first class thing to create open source operators that are very easy to use in exactly the way that I'm describing over here. So this is a boil the ocean kind of problem, right? If you can work in this way, this is amazing. And if you can't work it with, if there's some piece that you don't have, then it's open source and people join that community to go and add that piece that they that they that they want. So uh, let me right. So let me take you to charmhub.io, right? It's sort of like an app store for Kubernetes, and it shows you all of those charms and who's producing them so that you can effectively start the conversations. There's documentation for them over there. Um, and they are effectively um, uh, continuously evolving to represent the status the state of the art. So um, great, I just stood up Mattermost and integrated with Postgres. Databases are supposed to be hard, but that wasn't hard. Um, I'm gonna go back to the status in a second and show you that those things are up and talking to each other. Um, but first I wanna kind of take things on a little further, right? So Mattermost is this great web chat system that uses Postgres as a backend. But what if I wanted to have more in-depth conversations with my community? Well, there's another great piece of open source called Discourse. Uh, and Discourse also uses Postgres, uh, and it also uses Redis, right? So Discourse is an, another piece of software that can integrate with Postgres, and it can integrate with Redis. Why don't we go and add that live in front of a studio audience uh, to, to the model that I was building there of Mattermost. Um, and I'm going to switch back to the, um, to the console. Right. So you can see here that I've basically got Mattermost and Postgres and both of these are active idle over there. So if, in fact, Mattermost is up talking to Postgres, they're up, they're configured, they're talking to each other. I can go start essentially um, uh, adding users to my Mattermost and, uh, and, and building out the community. But before I do that, I want to add discourse. So um, I am going to, I'm gonna go and deploy discourse and That wasn't hard. Um, I I'm also going to deploy Redis, right? Uh, I've now got Discourse and I've got Redis, but I haven't told anything to integrate. And what did I need to integrate? I needed to integrate or relate um, this course case to um, PostgreSQL case, um, and I'm going to do this to DB admin. Hmm, did I get that right? I think so, yes. Uh, I'm also going to relate discourse to Redis. Right. And so now I've essentially added to this model, um, I've added a discourse and I've added a Redis and I've integrated the old Postgres, which is still providing services to the Mattermost. I've integrated that with the um, uh, discourse and I've integrated discourse with Redis. So if I watch that, uh, you'll see that effectively the um, the Redis is up, the Postgres is up, the Mattermost is up, but the discourse is just waiting for its container to come down from Docker Hub. Right. So let me switch back to the slides. And 
this is effectively what I've built just with those couple of commands. Juju deploy Mattermost, Juju deploy Postgres, Juju deploy Discourse, Juju deploy Redis, Juju relate Mattermost to Postgres, Discourse to Postgres, and Discourse to Redis, right? I just described this model of the applications that I want. And Juju and the charmed operators did all the toil, like magic. So how does this actually work? Um, the secret here is that um, when I say Juju deploy Mattermost, Juju effectively will stand up a pod, and that can actually be multiple pods. I can scale that out. Juju will stand up a pod that has the charm and Mattermost as sidecars of each other. And the Mattermost charm operator, the charm container, is talking to Juju. The same thing happens when I say Juju deploy Postgres, right? Juju stands up a PostgreSQL pod, um, and that has two containers as sidecars. It has the PostgreSQL container and the PostgreSQL charmed operator. And because those charmed operators are both talking to Juju, when I ask them to relate, when I ask them to integrate, they can exchange the messages, and I can get that integration to happen without any work. I don't know where they are. I don't know what their IP addresses are. I don't know what their service names are, but I know that they're up. I know that they're running. Everything is grand. So all of the work is in those charmed containers, right? So if you're interested in this, then I would recommend to you discourse.charmhub.io, which, of course, is running on Kubernetes, powered by charmed operators. And that is where we discuss the evolution of charms, the evolution of Juju, the, create, the, the expansion of this community, allowing people to weave the web of applications that they can just use with no toil. Uh, if you want to read the docs, you'll find those at this URL, Juju is, docs SDK charm dash documentation. Um, right, that is everything I think I have time for. Um, I'm not exactly sure how we're going to handle questions in this pre-recorded format, but if you're there, I'm there, by all means, ask me questions. I'll be delighted to. Otherwise, you'll find me uh, in discourse uh, and in uh, and in Mattermost. I look forward to seeing you there.